I heard of this guy once saying that the football industry is like a sausage. If you like it, you probably don't want to know how and from what it's made. And yeah, besides the sport that millions of people love, including me, it is not precisely a surprise that there is an immense industry behind football that moves millions upon millions of dollars around the world, reaching such big dimensions, sometimes hard to believe. Let's prove that with a cold fact. Paris Saint-Germain spent $657 million signing players for their senior team in the last three seasons, which is more than the GDP of these six countries in 2018. Yes, I know that those are small and less developed countries, but you can get an idea about the dimension of this industry, mostly in tournaments like the UEFA Champions League or the FIFA World Cup. In an ideal world, a big part of the earnings of any profitable industry related to entertainment would go to social programs and organizations which help people in unfavorable conditions. But although we know some great social programs developed by football clubs and organizations, they can do more. So what happens if 1% of all the gross earnings that any person, company, institution, or organization gets from football goes directly to social programs? Well, there's one Spanish footballer who asked that question to himself, the Manchester United midfielder Juan Mata. For that reason, he made a partnership with Street Football World, a network to create Common Goal, a pledge-based charitable movement where people and organizations involved in the football industry can take part. The idea is simple. Any member who voluntarily joins the movement pledges 1% of their earnings to a central fund, and then Common Goal allocates that money to high-impact organizations which use the impact of football as a tool to advance the UN Global Goals, which are a collection of 17 different goals for 2030, including the end of poverty in all its forms, universal access to quality education, health, food, and more. Common Goal was launched August 4, 2017, curiously the same day that Paris Saint-Germain presented Neymar to their supporters, a transfer widely criticized by the obscene amount of money paid for the player, showing how the top part of the football industry seems to be so far from the reality of their supporters and the middle and lower levels of the industry. The list of collaborators is huge and diverse, from the Liverpool FC coach Jurgen Klopp and the Juventus defender Giorgio Cinelli to a Sambian player Barbara Banda, who plays in the Spanish Women's League, and the Nicaraguan player Ana Cate, who plays in the top tier of the women's Icelandic football. Something that caught my eye in that list is the number of female and semi-professional players collaborating with the project, and also the significant number of players who play in leagues where they don't earn enormous salaries for playing football. And then the list started to grow thanks to different football clubs, supporters, associations, sports journalists, YouTubers, football-related companies, and executives, all joining and making the pledge to donate 1% of their earnings as well. Of course, there are more people working for this project besides Juan Mata. On the steering board, there are three more people, including the CEO of the Street Football World Network. But we would like to focus on Mata because his profile is very different compared to what we know about soccer players. Mata has two degrees, one in marketing and another one in sports science. Also, when the Real Oviedo Football Club was on the edge of bankruptcy in 2012, Mata bought some shares of the club and saved his hometown city's team from disappearing. During the time, other footballers like Michu and Santi Casorla participated in the cause as well. And his personal life is very different compared to what we know from other players. Mata is single, without children, and his agent is his own father. An outsider of football, he keeps a low-profile lifestyle, only participating in activities related to charity. There are no fancy cars, weird haircuts, or Fortnite-related celebrations. Sorry, I have nothing against Fortnite, but this... Come on, Griezmann, you, you can do better. In the last few weeks, Mata also launched his own book, Suddenly a Footballer, where he shares reflections on his career in the sport. Of course, 99% of the proceeds go to the Common Goal movement. Now, let's take a second to think about what would happen if Common Goal accomplished their intention, and 1% of the revenue that people get from football went to charity projects. Well, according to the info provided by Common Goal, if they achieved their goal completely, the budget of the organizations they support would increase by 400%, making it possible to help 8 million people more than they currently do. Due to privacy policies in the contracts, it is not easy to figure out the data of how much money Common Goal would collect if everyone joined. But for example, if every player in the Spanish La Liga was part of Common Goal, then that would mean that $50 million annually would go to social development projects. Or if the top 20 most profitable football clubs in the world joined the movement, 
Common Goal would collect more than $90 million annually to put towards these efforts. Common Goal, in partnership with Street Football Network, supports more than 2 million people through 120 different diverse foundations and NGOs around the world. From an NGO which works on the protection and education of homeless children in Burundi, to another one in Nepal that works to find better opportunities and allow personal development for the childhood there. In the list, you can find an NGO which works on improving the life quality of the families and refugees near Gaza, the West Bank, and Lebanon. Another NGO working on the citizenship rights and the access opportunities for the people in the Andean area of Peru. As you can see, the list is extensive and diverse. On Common Goal's website, there's a section for supporters who want to join because we're part of the game too. So everybody can be part of this important work, including the humans behind Explainosphere. For that reason, I'm pleased to announce that from the launching of this video, that 1% of the channel's revenue will be going to this organization. At the time of recording of this video, we are not a big channel, but we're confident that we'll continue to grow. From now and every month, I'm going to manually donate the contribution of this channel in the Common Goal website. They don't know who I am, and they don't know anything about this video, so I guarantee you that there's no secret agenda behind this. Please consider being a part of this kind of movement, and if you know something about Common Goal that is not mentioned in this video, please share it in the comments. That's all for today. I hope you liked it and learned something interesting from it. We would appreciate your collaboration in sharing and clicking the like button in the video. That's all for now. 